misrepresentation central to the narrative of the oppressed and the oppressor and to the most painful part of this nation's history. In our third story, a fourth grade history textbook with that claim that thousands of Southern African Americans fought in the Confederacy for the South. The Virginia textbook, Our Virginia Past and Present, was distributed to that state's public elementary schools last month, according to the Washington Post. In a short section devoted to the roles of whites, African Americans, and Native Americans in the Civil War, the relevant sentence reads, thousands of Southern blacks fought in the Confederate ranks, including two black battalions under the command of Stonewall Jackson. As the Post notes, such claims about black Confederate soldiers are almost unanimously rejected by actual historians. They are misrepresentations of history. There is evidence of some African Americans having fought for the South, but since they were either slaves or if freed by their owners, still oppressed citizens, not even citizens, context is everything. And Stonewall Jackson, by the way, was killed in May 1863, and any idea that the South would have given weapons to large numbers of slaves in 1863 would be, in any other context, comical. The Washington Post cited a University of Virginia historian who says he's documented evidence in the form of newspapers and personal letters of some black Confederate soldiers, but that historian also says, quote, there's no way of knowing that there were thousands, and the claim about Jackson is totally false. I don't know where that came from. Where that came from, explains the author of the textbook, primarily from an internet search. And the publisher, Five Ponds Press, offered three of those internet links. But those links reference work by groups like Sons of Confederate Veterans, ascribing to a revisionist view that substantial numbers of African American soldiers fought for the Confederacy. One of the motivations behind that claim would be slavery was not the main cause of the Civil War. Meantime, officials from Virginia's Department of Education have told the Washington Post that vetting of the book was flawed and that they will caution school districts against teaching that passage. Quoting a spokesman, just because a book is approved doesn't mean the Department of Education endorses every sentence. The claim about black Confederate soldiers is, quote, outside mainstream Civil War scholarship. But back to the author, Joy Massoff. The Washington Post describes her as not a trained historian. As controversial as it is, she says, I stand by what I write. I'm a fairly respected writer. She also says, quote, it's just one sentence. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. If the historians had contacted me and asked me to take it out, I would have. Ms. Massoff has also written, oh, yuck, the encyclopedia of everything nasty, and oh, yikes, history's grossest moments. We don't believe it includes the textbook. Let's bring in a professor of 19th century American history at the College of William and Mary, co-author of A People at War, Civilians and Soldiers in America's Civil War, Carol Sheriff, who also happens to be the parent who discovered this claim about black Confederate soldiers in her daughter's history textbook. Thanks for your time tonight. Thank you for having me. Well, uh, tell us how you came to find that passage and what you tried to do about it. Okay, well, it was kind of an odd and striking coincidence that I attended a conference in late September on the role of slavery in the Civil War. And during this conference, in the opening remarks of this conference, the, the governor of Virginia used the opportunity to recant what he had said last spring when he was declaring Confederate History Month, that slavery was not a central cause to, of the Civil War. In this speech, he spoke very eloquently and passionately about how slavery was, in fact, central to the Civil War. And he vowed that henceforth, we would remember our history with candor and courage. Three days later, my nine-year-old daughter brought home her social studies textbook, and I immediately turned to the chapter on the Civil War to see whether his vow had played out in what our children were going to be learning. At first, I was very heartened because the book does say quite up front that the, the main cause of the Civil War was disagreements over slavery, and it talks about how slavery was a cruel institution. I was thus, thus flawed when I came to the statement that said just what you read mm -hmm. in your opening remarks there, which is a, a myth that's perpetuated by people who would like us to lead us to believe that slavery was not the central cause of the Civil War. I asked uh, my friend Ken Burns, who put together the, the documentary, The Civil War, about this, and he emailed me back something, and I'd like to read it in full and get your reaction to it. Unquestionably, sure. some African Americans did fight for the South, but the implications that they were a tactically organized force in the thousands would be laughable if its ultimate effects weren't so pernicious and ignorant of the far larger and more important story that African Americans weren't passive bystanders to the struggle, but active, dedicated, self-sacrificing soldiers in an intensely personal drama of self-liberation. The rest of this vile review Visionism is the expression of an ultimately anti-American impulse that says that human beings are somehow happy as slaves and were willing to fight to perpetuate that status. That is not what happened. That is not what the Civil War was about. That is not what America is about. If one wanted to play this game, let's talk about the tens of thousands of white Southerners who fought to preserve the Union and its indelible meanings, not the least of which is the fostering of freedom. Do you think what Ken wrote there sort of boils this down to its essence? 
I think it does very well, and I think what's striking about it is that this quote really flies in the face of what the textbook is otherwise claiming early on. The textbook does say that slavery was central to the war, and this claim undermines that, and I think it must be extremely confusing to a ninth grader, I mean a nine-year-old, a fourth grader. Uh, is this it in terms of what the, what the Department of Education is going to do about this? They're just going to say, to be careful about that one sentence. We send somebody around with magic markers and cross it out. Is that all? I mean, they're just going to say, don't read that one part? Well, I don't know what they intend to do, but I know what I can hope that, that they might do. I, I actually think that this is a good approach, that if they, they, they have several months until children will be learning about the Civil War, they still have 250 more years of history to cover. They're just at 16, 19 at the moment. And I think that if they can send out supplementary materials to the teachers and have the teachers help the students understand how they need to bring a critical eye to what they read and to also think about how this history book was produced and to use this as a word of caution to our children about how we go about doing research on the Internet. Carol Sheriff, uh, Professor of History at College of uh, William & Mary, great thanks for your time. Well, thank you very much. How fitting, more history rewritten, courtesy of the right-wing whack job wife of Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas, who demands an apology from Thomas's most famous victim. So somebody thinks it's a good idea to start talking about how demonic the president looks? Looks are fair game now, sir? And when Rachel joins you at the top of the hour, she'll take a look at super PACs with Frank Rich of the New York Times.